Yes. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Mechun, and you are with me on Two Up channel. Today's video is on cardiovascular disease as a major factor or a major disease killing most of our women. If you thought we lose maximum number of our women to breast cancer, then you are wrong. Cardiovascular disease is the number one killer of women. A woman's lifetime risk of dying from heart disease is eight times greater than that of breast cancer. The most worrying factor is that now heart ailments are affecting more women in the reproductive age group, unlike in the past when women got it mostly after menopause. This could be because levels of oestrogen, the hormones, would give extra protection to women's heart is found in low levels in young women due to changing lifestyle. Early onset of diabetes, obesity, and related ailments and physical inactivity. A greater proportion of women, about 52%, than men, 43%, with heart ailment, die of sudden cardiac death before reaching the hospital. 62 of housewives and 67% of working women above 13 years are at risk of heart disease. Says, be dying of heart disease. I would encourage every person there, every woman folk out there to go for a well woman visit. That is extremely important. A well woman visit should include what your BMI is, what your blood pressure is. Heart disease in women. Today we are going to look at the cardiovascular disease that happens in our women. Cardiovascular disease has been the major killer of or the major killing machine on women these days. Heart disease may be considered by some to be a problem for men. However, it is the most common cause of death these days for both women and men in the United States. It has been the most killing uh, machine for women because some heart disease symptoms in women can differ from those in men when, when we talk about heart disease women may not know what to look for let's look at some heart attack symptoms for women the most common heart attack symptoms in women is the same as in the men. Some type of chest pain, you have the pressure or discomfort that lasts for more than a few minutes or comes and goes. But chest pain is not always severe or even the most noticeable symptoms. Particularly in women, Women often describe heart attack pain as pressure or tightness and it's possible to have a heart attack without chest pain. Women are more likely than men to have heart attack symptoms unrelated to chest pain. Let's look at some of the pains or some of the uh, symptoms that early shows when you are even or you are about to get heart attack. One, you get pains at the neck level, on your neck, and sometimes your jaw, the shoulders, there are pains at times women used to feel on their shoulders, the upper back, or upper belly. Sometimes you also feel some abdominal or discomfort 
shortness of breath also. Pains in your neck, again and the uh, pains in one's both arms. Sometimes they also feel the pains in the arms. You also get nausea sometimes and vomiting. Sometimes these pains can also cause vomiting. Seriously about women and heart disease, which is the number one killer of women. Dr. Rachel Haley of HCA Midwest Health explains how we can lower our risk. The American Heart Association estimating 90% of women have one or more risk factor when it comes to stroke or heart disease. So what can we as women do to lower those so we can actually help prevent a heart attack? It, it's tragic. Every 80 seconds in this country, Cardiovascular disease, mm -hmm. including stroke, claims a woman's life. So Gosh. as women, we need to take charge of our own heart health. We need to know our risk factors, make lifestyle changes, see the doctor if we need to, get tested, and take medications if it's indicated. 80% of all heart attacks are preventable with lifestyle wow. modifications and risk factor reduction. Okay, so what you just told us is we can take charge of our own health. So what are some of those risk factors we should be aware of? Now, there are many, but some of the most important ones are diabetes, high cholesterol, mm. high blood pressure, smoking, obesity, being physically inactive, family history, and age. A woman over the age of 55 is at greater risk for heart disease. And some of those things, may be hereditary and maybe we can't do anything about it, but a lot of it can be modified through lifestyle changes. Yes. So what do you recommend doing so that we can lower those risks? Yes, it's simple and it's a lot of common sense. Mm -hmm. One of the most important lifestyle modifications you can do is if you smoke, stop. Smoking, Put it out. Smoking causes um, your blood vessels to have plaque mm -hmm. formation. It can cause clots to form. It also reduces your HDL, which is your good cholesterol. Additionally, we need to be more physically active. 30 minutes a day can greatly reduce our risk. We need to eat a healthy diet. Vegetables, legumes, beans, um, lean meats. Uh, Everything mom and dad told us uh, to get it's actually good for you. And you need to <laughs> avoid things. Avoid um, trans fats, reduce mm -hmm. um, saturated fats, caffeine, salt, limit alcohol. True or false, are heart attack symptoms the same in both men and women? Women don't necessarily have chest pain like a man. Okay. Women can have shortness of breath, fatigue, um, pain in the neck, the jaw, the back, nausea wow. and vomiting. Those can be even more common than say the classic chest pain. Why should women or some women get a coronary calcium scoring test? You know, these heart scans can really be beneficial in people that have no symptoms but have mm -hmm. risk factors like diabetes, the heart disease, family history. Um, you know, knowing your score uh, can help you and your physician know what your uh, risk is. We've been dealing with a lot of snow and that means snow shoveling. So why can this actually be dangerous? Well, it's it's funny. You can, you know, slip and fall and, you know, sprain something or break a bone, but you can You can all... slip and fall just walking outside. Absolutely, but you can also mm -hmm. have a heart attack and end up in the ER. And it, it seems simple, but shoveling snow can actually do this. And um, you know, the cold temperatures and physical labor puts an added stress on the heart. Unusual fatigue also can uh, pop up. We also have heart burns and indigestions as well. So all these are symptoms that can show up when you are about to get into contact with this disease. These symptoms may be vague and not as noticeable as the crashing chest pain. Often associated with the heart attacks. This might be because women tend to have blockage not only in their main arteries, but in the smaller ones that supply blood to the heart. A condition called small vessels that disease or coronary macrovascular disease. Compared with men, women tend to have symptoms more often when resting or even when asleep. 
emotional stress can play a role in triggering heart attack in women. Because women heart attacks symptoms can differ from men and women. Might be diagnosed less often with heart attacks than each year, as many as 5 million Americans are diagnosed with heart valve disease. Valve disease is a cardiovascular condition that affects men and women of all ages, but that becomes increasingly more common with age. Overall, it is estimated that 1 in 50 women have valve disease, but by the age of 75 and older, that number grows to 1 in 10 women. Valve diseases involve damage to one of the heart's four valves, the thin leaflets of tissue that separate the four chambers of the heart. A person may be born with a heart defect, or valve damage may develop later in life from an infection, cardiovascular problems like a heart attack, or simply aging. Most heart valve disorders involve either regurgitation or stenosis, although some may involve both types of damage. With regurgitation, the valve doesn't close completely, allowing leaks. Stenosis occurs when the opening becomes stiff or narrowed and limits blood flow. All four valves can be damaged, but diseases of the tricuspid and pulmonary valves are rare. Aortic stenosis is one of the most common types of valve disease, affecting one in four women over the age of 65, and is often caused by thickening of the valve from a natural buildup of calcium. Aortic regurgitation or insufficiency occurs in around 8% of women, where leakage causes the heart to stretch and enlarge. Mitral valve prolapse is a type of regurgitation where an enlarged or floppy mitral valve fails to close properly. It only occurs in about 6% of women, mostly younger, and declines with age. With mitral valve stenosis, the narrowing of the mitral valve opening, women account for 70% of cases and are three times more likely than men to have the condition. While many types of valve disease are not serious, others cause the heart to work harder, enlarge, and lead to complications that can cause major health problems, disability, loss of independence, and death. Fortunately, people of all ages who have valve disease can usually be successfully treated with valve repair or replacement. Even though both men and women get heart valve disease, for women, the experience can be very different. Women okay, so let's look at some of the factors or the risks that increase heart attacks in women. One, we have diabetics or the diabetes. Women with diabetes can the risk of uh, heart attack in these women are very high. Women with diabetes are more likely to develop heart attack disease than are men with diabetes. Also, because diabetes or diabetics can change in change the way women feel the pain in the women, they are an increased risk of having a silent heart attack without symptoms. So if a woman is diabetic, the symptoms are minimal and if you are not conscious, you will not even see. So it is very important for women to note this, especially women with diabetes. They should also check for this one because it will the risk of getting heart attack is very high. Also, emotional stress and depression can also cause high, or is it one of the main, uh, one of the factors that can increase heart attack or can also cause heart attack in women. Stress and depression affect women's hearts uh, more than men. Depression may make it difficult to maintain a healthy lifestyle and follow recommended treatment for other health conditions. So depression, women who always go through depression, the risk, the, the risk of getting this uh, heart attack or the rate of getting this heart attack is very high. So I entreat women to also work out all these uh, risks that can cause heart attack also. <clears throat> so if you are
fan of going through depression or if there is a sad or uh, emotional stress in which you are going through try to take it easy so that you don't also attract what you call what cardiovascular disease as well smoking excess or excessive smoking by women women are not supposed to be smoking uh, maybe one day we'll talk about the effect of smoke or smoking so smoking is a greater risk factor for heart disease in women than in men especially when you compare the rate at which this is what affecting or killing men is very low than in women so if you're a woman and you are smoking i entreat you to stop because it will not help you it is it is not as it's not helping your health also so women should just stay away from that inactivity um is another factor or another risk factor um lack of exercise can also cause or can also increase the rate at which heart attack affects a woman so as a woman you should try to at least get some fitness get something doing that can what shake your blood or can move your blood mm -hmm. a lack of physical activity is a major risk factor for heart disease and also another one is menopause uh, women actually at a certain point has to go through this day especially at the 50s for our women so low level of estrogen after menopause increase the risk of developing disease in smaller blood vessels so at times at the age of 50s and those time the estrogen in the blood or the estrogen that is released can also make or uh, increase the risk of what developing this heart attack another one is pregnancy complications so if you're a woman and you have these pregnancy complications at times the risk of uh, getting or the rate of it you can get heart attacks is very high too. so high blood pressure diabetes during uh, pregnancy can increase the mother's long-term risk of high blood pressure and diabetes this condition also makes women more likely to get heart attack another one is family history and early uh, early heart disease so if you are your family or the family you are coming from especially your mother your father this kind of disease has been uh, worried to any of them then you have to watch out because it can also appear or happen to you as well so if certain is going on or have been in the past or sometimes even our parents die through this so if you were able to know when it was uh, 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 was seen then you have to find an antidote to this because it can come to you it can affect you as well now let's look at some of the remedies that we can do or some of the lifestyles we can uh, use in our home to fight or to eliminate or to prevent this heart attacks as a woman these are just a preventive uh, measures you are going to look at so what quitting smoking you have to quit smoking so if you're a woman who is indulging in this kind of arts or smoking i entreat you to stay away from that because it's not going to help your head as well another one is also you should look at your diet 
uh, what you eat, the food you are taking. So you should also learn or opt for whole grains like fruits, vegetables, low fat and fat free dairy products and lean meats that will help you as a woman if you want to stay away from heart attack. So avoid saturated or trans fats, added sugar and soda drinks and other stuff. You should get away or you should take away all those things because it's not going to help you. Most women are taking these soda drinks and other stuff and it's not helping their head. It can lead to heart attack or cardiovascular disease. Yes. Another one you all know it's obvious uh, exercise, regular exercise is a major remedy you can use. Always try to do something just to shake up the blood. Mm? So exercising help or improve you, uh, your head better. It will make you so if you are overweight, especially most women tend to be overweight like obesity. It's one of the cause, it can also cause heart attack if you see your weight or you see that you are pulling up some weight. You have to find a way like exercising to reduce all those or burn those fats. So, so that this one will help prevent this heart disease. Another one is manage stress. Yes. Uh, we all, everybody go through stress. Everybody, every individual, one at a point, go into a stress. So I entreat you, or I, I'll urge you to find a way to what go or reduce the stress. You can stress can cause arteries to tighten, yes, which can increase the risk of heart disease, particularly coronary or microvascular disease which can get you a heart problem. So I entreat you if you are going through any problem like sadness or something like you, our relationship or whatever, I don't know what issue can put you to those stress. But if you are going through that, try to calm yourself. Try to do something or don't take things too hard. Mm -hmm. because you are not the last person going through that pain you are not the first person going through that pain it has happened yes but you have to find a way to contain it so i entreat you if something like that happens to you please get to what contain women tend to be smaller than men in both body weight and stature and have smaller hearts these differences are important when it comes to recognizing symptoms, getting diagnosed, and making proper treatment decisions. Some people with valve disease may not show symptoms, but severe cases usually cause symptoms like chest pain or pressure, joint pain and muscle aches, sudden weight loss, irregular heartbeat, headaches, severe fatigue, dizziness, shortness of breath, nausea and swelling in the ankles, feet or belly. Sometimes these symptoms are inaccurately dismissed as a normal consequence of aging. Women may also experience different symptoms than men with the same disease. Additionally, compared with men, women with symptoms tend to see a healthcare professional later and are less likely to be seen by a heart specialist. Women are also treated later and too often have their symptoms misdiagnosed as anxiety. Early detection of valve disease is critical and can save lives, so women experiencing symptoms should see a healthcare professional right away. A healthcare professional may suspect heart valve disease if abnormal heartbeats or murmurs are heard through a stethoscope or if their patient complains of symptoms. Further testing may be necessary to confirm valve disease. Some valve diseases do not need treatment, but should be monitored regularly. Other valve diseases may require valve repair or replacement. In most cases, this is the only way to effectively treat the disease. In some cases, remodeling valve tissue or repairing scarred valve leaflets may help them open more easily. In cases where valves are severely damaged, heart valve replacement surgery may be recommended. 
For most patients, the risk of complications from replacement are low no matter what their age. However, for patients with other diseases and conditions that make them poor candidates for surgery, less invasive procedures are now available. More than 60% of heart valve replacements are performed in women. Women can have different surgical outcomes than men, so it's important to discuss risks with a healthcare professional. The selection of a new valve, whether mechanical or tissue, may depend on the woman's age and body size. Recognizing the symptoms of heart valve disease is critical to effective treatment. If you have a heart murmur or other symptoms of valve disease, talk to your healthcare professional. Discuss your family and medical history, medications, and any symptoms you may be experiencing. If you have been diagnosed with heart valve disease, be sure to discuss the best treatment options. My primary care and they didn't find out that I had high blood pressure. Nicola Hamilton experienced years of headaches and numerous miscarriages. I would say five to six out of 10 women I see um, have elevated blood pressures. While doctors are helping those that come in the door release the pressure, a partnership of healthcare groups and experts trying to work directly with black women. Our numbers and us not having the tools to be in control of our numbers. Now aware of the problem high blood pressure poses,